Hey everybody, my name is Michaela Karen. I am a full-time iOS developer and freelancer. Let's get started writing a unit test. In the last video, we mocked our network request. So if we open that and open the real one, we mocked this HTTP client. So what it actually does is loads a JSON file from the unit test target, as opposed to what the real HTTP client does here, is it goes to the actual like network to the internet and fetches the data. And we were able to do this because this load JSON file is a part of Mockable, which is a custom protocol that we created. It has the bundle and then the code that actually fetches the JSON data. And with the HTTP client, we created our protocol HTTP client. And what this does is in our actual song list view model, we take in the protocol as opposed to taking in the concrete type. So this will allow us in our test to switch out the concrete type with our mock type. In doing this, this allows us to test our code as opposed to testing the network. So when somebody has like a spotty internet connection, their network downloading the data would take longer as opposed to somebody who has a fast internet connection. So when we unit test, we wanna take that like completely out of the equation. So let's go back to our original file that says YT Vapor iOS app tests. Let's, yeah, let's just delete it. So click on this and click delete and move to trash. So click on the group folder here and click command N to make a, U a new file. And for this, you technically, you could write a Swift file or we can just click specifically on unit test case class. And what this is, it is a Swift file, but it sets up everything for you ahead of time. So let's call this um, song list view model tests. And then it is a subclass of XC test case and we are using Swift. So if we click next, we want to save it in the app test group and then make sure it's in the proper target, our test target, and click create. And when we clicked like unit test case, as opposed to just making a Swift file, because that's exactly what this is, um, all this is doing is just giving us all this boilerplate. So we're actually going to delete it all. So maybe we could have made a Swift file, but that's okay. And you see on the left, it says R that's because this project is under source control. And so it thinks we were, we removed that one file and then added it back and it thinks, uh, Git thinks that we just renamed the file. So it's like removing it, but that doesn't really matter. So what we want to do is make a setup method and the teardown methods. So let's type setup. And sometimes when you hit enter immediately, it has this class function that is not the one that we want. We want the normal setup function, which would look like this. But if you start typing setup again, you can see the difference between the two. The top one says initial state before a test case begins. And then the bottom one says, uh, blah, 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 calling each test method in a test case. So the whole test case is your class, but the test method, that's our actual like unit test. So that's the one we want. And you can see it doesn't have that word class in front of it. So we want to do this for setup and teardown. So we want to call this super class. So super dot setup and oh, not setup uh, super dot teardown. And what we want to test is our view song list view model. So let's make a variable for it. Let's call it song list VM and it is of type song list view model. So if we try to run the unit test, if we click command U, it doesn't run because for one, it doesn't have an initializer and two, it says song list view model not in scope. So what we have to do is this test target is a completely different target, meaning group of like scope of our app. So if we collapse that. This is our test target and then this is our app target. And they don't like talk to each other without you saying so. So what we have to do is import our app targets code. So we do that with at testable import, then YT Vapor iOS app, and this will typically be the name like of your project. And this says it has no initializer, so what we actually want to do is force unwrap it. And then that should be good. So what we're gonna do in the setup is 
set it to a value because right now we know the type, but it doesn't have a value yet. So we want to do songless VM is equal to songless view model. And we can see it takes in a type of HTTP client protocol. And then, you know, the variable is called HTTP client. So what we want to give it is our mock as opposed to giving it the real HTTP client. Or what do we call this? Mock HTTP client. And right here, so we are setting the mock, we're giving the mock to our uh, view model rather than using the real HTTP client here. Uh, do, 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 where did it go? Like it does right here is where we can pass in whichever one we want, the mock or the real one. So we want to do that. And then in the teardown, we want to do, not that one, song list VM and just set it equal to nil. Because with setup and teardown, this allows us to create our, our unit test to have the same um, parameters when they start each uh, test and when they end each test. Or no, sorry, when they start every new test. So the setup is run before each test and then the teardown is run afterwards. So this is like resetting our state. And what we want to do is let's do func test fetch songs successfully. And when we do this, we can go ahead and click on the diamond to run the whole class or just run this unit test. And we run it, it builds our app and says test succeeded, which is good because our unit test, or sorry, our app, yeah, app test target, or sorry, the test target is running um, and doesn't have any build errors. But this isn't really doing anything because we're not asserting anything in this actual function. So what we want to do is we want to test when we fetch songs and make sure that we fetch and receive the proper number of songs. So we, when we look at our mock song response, we have two different songs. So we want to make sure that two songs are fetched properly. So if we try, er, yeah, we need try first. Try await songless vm dot fetch songs. Um, hopefully that works. Oh, errors are thrown. That is because we could either wrap this in a do catch or change our, uh, change the function, the actual uh, unit test function to say that it throws. So then this should go away. There we go. And then lastly, we want to assert. So we want to XCT assert, let's do XCT assert equal. And we want to assert that the songs in our view model, this, the songs is equal to whatever was fetched from here, because we can see it makes a URL, make sure that it's a URL object from that string. We do the fetch, which this will be our mock one. So this will actually go and fetch the loaded JSON file, set it to song response. And then here we are setting the song response equal to this variable songs here. So we want to do song list VM dot songs dot count because it's an array is equal to two. So we should be able to do that and our test should pass, but it doesn't. So why didn't this work the way it should have? So it says zero is not equal to two. So this one is the one that's getting back zero, but According to our mock, we should be returning our loaded JSON response, which right here, there's two values. So I struggled with this for a really long time. And I found out the reason is because in our songless view model, this is a published variable. So it acts a little bit differently as opposed to if it was just a normal variable. So we have to write our unit test to account for that. Um, where do we go here? So what we actually want to do is use ex what are called expectations. So we need to do let expectation yeah, is equal to, er, which one is it? XCT test, why am I not finding it?
There we go. Okay, it is called XC Test Expectation. Um, and then the description is... Um, so let's just call it songs. So what an expectation is, is basically we are, we have to wait for something to happen. So we think of it like we expect something to happen, but we don't know when it's going to be happening. So we have to tell the code, when will this happen? So with the expectation, that is defining what is the expectation, and it's called songs. We could call it like published or fetch songs. And then inside of our code here, we are calling the fetch songs. So that is doing the fetching and using our mock variable. But we have to tell Xcode how, when do we expect this to finish? So I thought with the try await, it would just kind of work, but that didn't work for me because of this publish variable is what I found. But if there's a different way to do this that you know of, please let me know in the comments or tag me on Instagram or Twitter or tag code with Chris. I would love to know if there's a different way to do this, but this is the one that I found that has worked. So with this, we want to do song list VM and we are going to be using combine. So we need to import combine at the top. So this uses combine. And for anyone who doesn't know, this is a Ray Wonderlic tutorial, but combine, it was announced at WWDC and it is a reactive framework. So it's, as you can see, it's for handling events. Yeah, would be the best way to say this. It handles um, publisher and subscriber. So it handles when things happen and who should be listening to those things that are happening is sort of the gist of how all of this works. So that's what this is we have to know Right here, we are fetching our songs and data is going into our songs variable that is a published variable. So we need to know when that data was published so we have to subscribe to it, meaning listen for that to happen. So to do that, we're using songless VM and then dot songs is the published variable that we're listening to. And then here we have drop first. I will put a link for the um, post that I found that sort of gave me all this code that like made it all finally work. I'm not 100% sure why we're using drop first. This, when you look at the definition, it says omits a specified number of elements. And then down here it says the default is one. So it's dropping the first time a value is assigned to it. So I want to say that will be when the songless view model is created at first, the value is assigned and it's an empty array. So I want to say that's what the drop first is, but I'm not 100% sure. And then sync is actually, if we cl command click on this and then click show quick help, it says attaches a, sub a subscriber with closure based behavior to a publisher that never fails. So this means, and you can see, see in the example, if we have zero to three and we have a, that's a publisher and then we write sync, we can see what happens for zero to three um, every time the value of this variable changes. So that's what we're listening to is when this value changes and the value should change here because in fetch songs, if we go to our mock, because that's the one that's being called, we are loading the JSON. But if we look at the actual view model, here is that fetch. So this is loading JSON and we are setting song response, which, which is just a variable, but here song response is equal to self.songs. So that's what we're listening to. And then this is what that value is. And what we want to do is do XCT assert equal. And we want to assert that value dot count is equal to two. So we want to assert the value dot count because the value is whatever is in here, which is the songs array. So think of value as the songs array. And then it's an array. So it has a property called count. And that's what we're actually checking. And then we have to type expectation.fulfill. So this means at this point, our expectation, oh, um, our expectation, it's this is, we expect something to happen at some point. Here we go and do something. We go to this code finally, and then we can say, hey, our expectation, it happened. Like the thing that we were waiting for finally happened. So right here, we also have wait for expectation because it's the code may run through here and run through 
this, this is a closure, but then we have to say, hey, wait for something to happen. And this is not the right one. We want to Which one am I writing? I want to write. This one is wait. Okay, this is the one that we want to use is wait for expectations. So we are waiting for expectations. So this is an array of expectations. So it could, you could have multiple of them. And then the timeout is after like one second has passed, this would automatically fail and the unit test would fail. And then the last part of the, this part with observing it is we have to put it into, let's call a cancelable. So this needs to be a set of any cancelable and we need that in our unit test, or in our unit test uh, class. So we want to force unwrap that so we don't have that error with the no initializers. And down here, we will pass cancelables. So if we cl command click on this to see more about it, this says a set to store any cancelable. And if you click on this, the docs come up and tell you um, a cancelable object that executes a provided closure when canceled. We have this cancelable object. And honestly, I don't really know how this works exactly. I haven't done too much with combine. But when we have this sync here, it says um, it returns a cancelable, cancelable in, uh, instance, um, which you can use to end assignment of the received value. Um, and the deallocation of the result will tear down the subscription stream. And then this is what we use for that. So you can look and read more about what is any cancelable, this type, but you can see it's all part of combine, which has to do with publishing and subscribing variables and reacting. So once we write all of this, we should be good. So this you can see is from our failed unit test when it said zero is not equal to two, but then now how it's working is we have an expectation, meaning we expect something to happen, but we just don't know when. We are going to try to fetch songs, and this is fetching from our local JSON file. We run through this part, which is observing those changes to the songs variable in our song list view model, which is a published variable. And then once we do have a value, we can assert that it is equal to two, so we can actually remove it from down here. We could put it on either side, inside of this closure or not, but I've read that it's possible for this to all run before, or sorry, after this statement would have happened. So technically it still may have shown zero and two. In reality, when that may have not been true, it just depends on whatever ran first. So it says the best way would be to keep it inside of this closure. So we'll erase that one. But then here at the bottom, we are waiting for our expectation to happen here until we know that there's a value and we know that inside of this sync. And then that's when we can write expectation.fulfill, which means like our expectation is for fulfilled. The thing that we thought would happen has happened. So now we're good. And so when we go and run the unit test, we see build succeeded and that failed. What did this fail? Oh, I see. So this failed because we unexpectedly unwrapped nil. And the reason for that is because we never set a value for this. So what this is, is a set. So we write cancelables is equal to empty. It's an empty array, but I believe sets and arrays kind of use the same syntax. So that's all we need is cancelables is equal to empty array. And we could probably put that inside of our teardown as well. Okay, now we should run this and it should pass. 
And there we go, we see this pop-up test succeeded and our test has passed. So it took a lot of work to mock the network request and actually go about writing the unit test, but we have now like proven that we can fetch, a we can fetch data from JSON and we can handle it correctly in our application. So what we've done is we have tested a single thing, but if we wanted to know how much of our code base we've actually covered in tests, we use something called code coverage. So if you go up here, and I'm on Xcode 13.2.1 right now, so this is right here as opposed to it used to be kind of over here for Xcode, I think 12. Um, we click on this and click on edit scheme. And what we wanna do is go down to test, typically it's on run, so switch it to test, and we wanna check this box that says gather code coverage. And we want to do it only for some targets, and we click the plus, and right now we only have our actual app target, so that's what we want to test, as opposed to if you had other third-party libraries, they may show up here too, and you don't want to test those. You only want to test your own code. So if we go ahead and click add, it is noted right here, and we click close. So to actually figure, what that, figure out what that is, we click command U, and that runs all of the tests. So if you had unit tests and UI tests, it would run everything. And that's what you want to gather all what's called the code coverage. So we want to know what code is covered under unit tests. And we can see that by going over to this far one over here, navigator, what is it called? It is the report navigator. So you can see these are all from like building the project over and over and over and the log of the build. So that shows you like whatever it is that you did. But we wanna check this one that says coverage. When we look at this, we can expand this and we can see only 37.6% of our code is covered. But when we click on it and expand it some more, we can go more in depth and see how much of each file is covered. So we can see the YT Vapor iOS app file that is 100% covered. And then our actual um, HTTP client, we can click on this and click this little arrow and it shows us what of our code is covered or not by this little thing on the left. And if you don't have this, click this little line thingy and then make sure you have code coverage selected. So mine, I typically usually have the mini map open as well. Um, I think I didn't have that the whole tutorial, but I usually have that open as well. But then you can also see the code coverage part, which will tell you um, this part of the code is covered, meaning literally like calling the function but this part is not covered of testing that we got back a 200 response. And you can see like individually line by line what is and isn't covered by a unit test. If we go to like our song list view model, we see most of that is covered. And then our fetch songs, we covered everything except the actual, if the URL is not a URL object, the code can exit at this point, meaning it can throw and then the function would end. We did not test that path but we tested the rest of it. So that's why under songless VM, we can see under fetch songs, that's like 84.6% covered. And that's how you can check your code coverage. And like I said during the introductory video, it depends on what kind of code coverage your company may have or you personally want, but overall you should go for quality of test over a specific number or a specific percentage because it varies. It's great like if you write a bunch of unit tests, but if the unit tests aren't really useful, then your code coverage kind of doesn't matter in the end. So make sure you have quality over quantity of unit tests. In this video, we wrote a unit test that used a mocked network request so that we could isolate our unit test and only test our code as opposed to also testing the network or testing the internet. And we also enabled code coverage for our project.